walking stumbling on these shadow feet toward home a land that I've never seen. Well, I was surprised and really quite disappointed um, because the Australian government has been working with. Um, UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency and others to promote discussion um, within the Asia Pacific region about the need for more effective cooperation on refugee protection and to see that this uh, very constructive um, uh, approach of um, promoting dialogue and cooperation between governments was actually resulting um, in a um, pretty seedy deal really um, with Malaysia well before um, you know, the uh, preconditions for a reasonable agreement with, with Malaysia could possibly be in place. Yeah, like most of my colleagues uh, and who work as refugee advocates in Australia, we were all uh, you know, horrified that it had happened. Uh, because uh, this, we all know that the situation in Malaysia isn't good. When the world is falling out from under me, you know, the Prime Minister said that they, they won't receive special treatment. And the Minister for Immigration said that they'll be treated humanely. Well, I mean, the sad reality is if they are to be treated humanely, they must receive special treatment because um, asylum seekers are not treated humanely as a matter of course in Malaysia at all. We have many reports from women who have managed to get here of being raped in detention, men being beaten, men showing their scars, how they're beaten with chains, caned, you can be caned in Malaysia, and men will have shown their scars of caning. Um, so that the men are, are brutalised, the women are raped. Uh, that's one of the worst parts of the refugee women's experience is her, sec her abuse is always sexual and it's endemic. When we talk about uh, sexual abuse and women, we're talking about little girls up. We're not talking about, oh, the rapists wait till they're 18 and then say, oh, now she's a woman, we can rape her. I don't think what, you know, the Australian government has thought carefully enough about the fact that with this agreement they're actually tying Australia's treatment of refugees to Malaysia's treatment of refugees. And so, you know, Australia is actually going to, to face the political consequences, both domestically and internationally, of Malaysia's mistreatment of people who have been transferred under this agreement, or, um, or even, you know, some um, backlash or negative commentary or negative reflection on the fact that, you know, the people transferred from Australia are being treated differently to the, and, and they're actually dealing with um, a country that, um, you know, still is not prepared to provide even the most basic human rights, um, you know, the most basic levels of human decency for people who are fleeing persecution. I'm coming home, I'm coming home, tell the world I'm coming home. There have been billions of dollars wasted you know, over the past decade um, on all sorts of draconian measures to respond to um, asylum seekers um, entering Australia you know, without a visa to seek asylum. If we spent that money on integration, if we spent that money on receiving them properly, Australia would be better off for it. Economic rationalism would say that the people into the community, Australia needs good migrants. Let's do everything we can to make sure these people become good productive migrants rather than put every barrier in the way to stop them coming. But the fundamental problem is that the way in which the whole issue has been framed in Australia politically, you know, we've had at least 12 years of um, you know, appalling political rhetoric. Um, you know, it's created this view and the, the certainly in the political class, the majority of people in the political class in Australia, widely in the media and definitely widely in, in public thinking, um, you know, that Australia has got this unmanageable problem with asylum seekers entering, you know, in an unauthorised manner to, uh, to seek protection. We had 8,000 is I think the biggest, 8,000 is about the biggest intake we've ever had. Every European country gets more than that every single year. I go to the United Nations a lot. I'm an accredited um, United Nations lobbyist, so I can go to any of the meetings. And people say to me, oh, your laws are so draconian, you must be swamped with refugees. How many do you get? And I sort of go, oh, 4,000 a year. And they say, how many? And then they laugh. They laugh at us. Because they get 50,000, 60,000, and they deal with them better than we deal with our 4,000. And we spend billions of dollars keeping four or five thousand people out. Most Australians don't know that 
uh, last year, last calendar year, only about 90,000 of the world's 15.2 million refugees got resettled. Um, and that, uh, you know, resettlement, while it's um, the largest part of uh, refugee support and protection in Australia's own experience, it's a tiny, tiny part of the overall picture. If the, our politicians are genuinely concerned about um, refugees who are still in, in refugee camps and in dire circumstances in urban situations, um, then they've actually got to show it um, in some way. So I think on one level, you know, the resettlement of 4,000 um, refugees over the next several years, it's certainly the most positive ad aspect of, uh, you know, an appallingly bad deal, uh, an appallingly bad arrangement. I'm coming home, I'm coming home, tell the world I'm coming home, let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. Yeah.